Walking down this only road Damn, they almost lost my soul But now that I'm in control What they gon' do? Can no evil hold me down? Let no evil hold me down When your world is on the ground What you gon' do? I won't go for anything That isn't in direction of the pool Don't ever let anything Come in between the shirt and you Atmosphere brushing fear right off the shoulders Looking around, looking around Couldn't find anyone, feel like the world getting colder Be all motivated, we won't stop until we are over Yeah, and I won't look back, no Won't look back, no Cause it's only a matter of time that we in here, dog. When we said you need to get involved Ain't no looking back, ain't no other way around it, dog. You got everything you need, young God Just honing your faith and your power Trust we could witness as I was No, this is not just a dream Keeping you up early every hour But it just doesn't make sense What good is this life if all we do is pretend Trying to see the light but darkness wants to creep in Way up in my mind wanna push me off the deep end Wait Slow down Hone it now If you believe then you better breathe it Walking down this only road Damn near almost lost my soul But now that I'm in control What they gonna do? Can no evil hold me down? Let no evil hold me down when your will is on the ground, what you gonna do? I won't go for anything that isn't in direction of the ball. Don't ever let anything come in between, cause surely you will lose. Introspect, take a sec, take a sec, watch your step, where you step, when you step, falling free through the sky, fill the breeze, fill the all your fears, let them die Energy never stops Introspect, take a set Take a second, let your world unfold Falling free to the sky I just wanna feel right I'm so tired of being lost All your fears, let them die Everything stays fast Energy never stops There's nothing we cannot handle Light up the dark like a candle Usually they misunderstand you, yeah Give a damn if they can't relate All we want is to motivate Take it on, never hesitate Acknowledge it, but then make it We are the ones in control, we are the ones in control Just hone in your faith and your power Trust we could win, this is ours No, this is not just a dream Take on the world and devour Walking down this only road Damn, they almost lost my soul but now that I'm in control, what they gon' do? Can no evil hold me down? Let no evil hold me down. When your world is on the ground, what you gon' do? I won't go for anything that isn't in direction of the ball. Don't ever let anything come in between, cause surely you will go. But you know I got to bang it Yeah, we're shooting for the stars You know you got to aim it Yeah, this goes out to the ones who doubt it How you gonna see with your eyes so clouded Look to the sky, feed your mind, reroute it Damn, it's been a long, long day I done came a long, long way I've been feeling all kind of restless Getting to it, what can I say? Soaking up game like a lesson Spirit too strong, that's a blessing Rather elevate into outer space You could go insane, lose your way from the stressing And I ain't really on that Gotta take it higher, yeah, we're on that We will never stop, we'll never fall back This is that, shh, I need more of that Gotta take it higher like you're on that Gonna take it higher, yeah, we're on that
Uh, yo, 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 yo. Hello, hello, hello. One moment, y'all. I got so many tabs open, I forgot to get everything together. So give me a moment while I get myself together. One second. All right, all right, all right. All right, hello. Hello, hello, everybody. This is E Black with E Black TV. This is the Black Afternoon Conversation. Uh, once again, if you like the video, please hit the like, subscribe button, all that good stuff. Uh, the Black Afternoon Conversation is definitely just a conversation in which we talk about points. Uh, don't have to cam up. So if you'd like to join the stream, please hit the link. The link is provided in the chat. Uh, also, if you would like to be a member of this channel, please join the Black Pride membership. That gets you like nice little emojis and stuff, but it also shows support for your content creator. Uh, the one thing I will say is that uh, we're gonna try to keep these up. I need to end. Uh, <laughs> I need to end my regular uh, season of the my main content, but the Black afternoon conversation is going to be definitely one of those great conversational pieces that I enjoy doing during the midday. Uh, but anyway, how's everybody doing? Uh, today we're going to be talking about the American dream. I'm warning you guys, this will be a precursor to another show that's coming up soon. Um, also, I forgot to mention, if you would like to also be a part of the panelists, please Click the link that is in the link in the description, also in the chat. This link will send you, I will send you directly to StreamYard link and also uh, pre uh, topics about other stuff. Anyway, anyway, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm doing like four or five different things back here and I'm trying to uh, run a show at the exact same time. So I apologize. But anyway, so what is the American dream? What is the American dream? What is the American dream? Let me get my tab with my notes on it. Uh, for the most part, most people, um, when they talk about the American dream, let's be honest. Let's be honest. We Usually people talk about the American dream as owning a house and maybe a car, picket, white picket fences, uh, kids going to school. Um, working a job that you like to work, uh, college, so forth. And, you know, that's the American dream to a lot of people. And we'll kind of discuss that. Uh, I will kind of give you a overview of what some people or what traditionally the, the American dream is. It's usually revolving around economic prosperity, some type of education and advancement, freedom and individualism, equal opportunity, home ownership and stability, social mobility, and the pursuit of happiness. That is some of the talking points in which where if you're going to discuss the American dream, you got to bring those in. You have to have some of that in there. Uh, but I think from my understanding as I was doing the research to what is the American dream, the phrase was popularized in the 20th century, particularly during the post-war War II era. It became a prominent theme in American literature, speeches, and political discourse, shaping the na national narrative and defining the vision of success and opportunity in the country. Scholars and writers such as James Adams, who coined the term American Dream in his 1931 book, The Epic of America, played a role in shaping the concept and articulating its meaning. Adams described the American dream as the dream of a land in which life should be better, richer, and fuller for everyone, with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement. Now, of course, over time, the American dream has evolved and been interpreted in many different ways by individuals and communities. It continues to be influenced by cultural, economic, and social factors, as well as an ongoing conversations and debates surrounding equality, social justice, and the meaning of success in American society. Now, ultimately, the American dream is very complex. 
multifaceted concept that has been shaped by the collective experiences, you know, values and aspirations of the American people throughout history. One moment, guys. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. What's up, Kay? What's up, E Black? I like what you're talking about over here. I wanted to tune in. Yeah, man. Uh, what do you have a What do you have a thoughts on in terms of the American dream? Um. So, the American dream, I believe, is the the pursuit of happiness or the, the ability to have the opportunity to pursue that happiness or success, and not necessarily uh, happiness, but whatever um, personal, uh, whatever personal ambitions and goals you might have for yourself as a, like, as like an individual. So I, that's what I believe with the, the, the American dream is just having the option to do now what, what would right now what would prev, what would necessarily prevent you from having say this dream um laws maybe regulation uh yeah that's what that's that's like the first two that come to mind laws and regulations okay uh would you include uh, racism in there not today okay not today. okay 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 all right, all right, that's good. Uh, yeah, because um, and I'm, I'm warning everybody. Like I said before, I'm flushing. I'm having another show that's going to be actually coming up uh, soon with some people. We're going to have a panel. We're going to be talking about it, and uh, I'm just kind of flushing out some ideas right now, um, revolving it. It's not necessarily going to be directly about the American dream, but it, it the idea of the American dream. So. Salute to everybody. Salute to Victor Freeze that's in the chat. So, um, yeah, you're right. You know, the pursuit of happiness uh, is a thing. Now, can a person be poor and have an American dream? Or is it truly just happiness in general? Because you know how people will say, oh, you, you, you got to have money and be happy. Yeah, I, I believe poor people can have, have the American dream. I can even argue that poor people are, I won't call them ignorant. I would say ignorant people are more happy than certain groups of people because they don't, they're content and happy in the way that they're living at, at, at that uh, poverty line. I don't want to call all poor people ignorant, but most of them are, if you want to really keep it 100. But um, yeah, that's my thought is, thoughts on it. Yeah, um, the thing about so, it is, you know, a lot yeah. of people, like, say, for instance, people are crossing the border to come to America to basically take whatever job they have, and yeah. they'll be relatively poor, but they'll have that American dream. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, uh, makes sense. They're like. And in fact, sometimes they may have left a place where they had more land. They may have left status. Uh, for instance, I interviewed a guy. Um, I I interviewed a guy. He, his son is a chess champion, right? Uh, in New York. Now he tells the story of how he lived in Nigeria, and he was a print shop maker. Mm. <laughs> he was print shop. So. He left uh, his country because Boko Haram was terrorizing his print shop, forcing him. The Boko Haram basically came to his print shop and said, you're going to pr print this pa propaganda piece that said we're going to kill Christians. He, Him being a Christian is like, nah, we're not. 
<laughs> I'm not down with that. But so he tried to he tried to kind of like say, oh, the machine is broke this day. So they kept on coming back, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, he ends up fleeing the country and ends up being homeless in Houston and in New York. They lived in a homeless shelter for a year. <laughs> Crazy, right? So yeah. he had, now, but his American dream is, of course, like you say, it's it's a, a, a absence of political political, you know, pressures, climate, the ability to upward mobilize yourself, you know, the ability to to be religiously free. So, you know, when we okay. talk about the American dream, I want us to also talk about I wanna, other um, aspects. Of other, I want to clarify my just, point about the, the poverty, p- people being ignorant, poor people being ignorant. I, I actually, I actually want to like retract that statement because you're right. There are people who are considered in the poor class who are who just who who are just starting out in the system and when i mean that they're ignorant they might be ignorant to the ways of the system for them to pursue but then they they eventually learn like that Mm -hmm. guy he's he he's new to america so he and he's starting at probably zero so he's not he's not an ignorant person from what you just told me he had a he has a business mind right but he uh his circumstances put him in a, a position put him in that lower class in a different society yes which so i kind of want to take back that ignorant part you know what i'm saying yeah and and that's fine like i said you know i'm not i'm not a gotcha channel person <laughs> yeah, like, yeah you know so i understand i understand what you're saying some so uh but like i said you know when we talk about it it's it's not necessarily economic but the ability to you know, achieve financial success, upward mobility, uh, what, getting a well-paying job, possibly owning a home, uh, being able to provide for one's family. That's another thing, uh, especially for men, being able to provide for one's family is definitely a core component of the American dream. I agree. Uh, and, and to have a comfortable standard of living. Now, when we talk about a comfortable standard of living, you know, I, gosh, you know, people in New York, they, <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, that's here or there, you know, I've, I'm used to living in an urban society. So I know what a one bedroom studio looks like in a one bedroom apartment. So everybody has their own variation of what's comfortable standard of living is, but the ability to basically say, you know, this is my home is another component of the American dream. This is my house. This is what I'm comfortable with living in. And I'm able to not only protect it, but to also, you know, live freely in that place. If, 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 that, if I'm not rambling too much, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. You know, some people consider Texas, maybe a, a, the typical atypical or the South atypical standard of the American dream, you know, white picket fences, lots of land. While other people may say, you know what, I love the urban centers and I want to, you know, you know, I remember when I was younger, I remember when I was younger, uh, I always wanted, hold on one second. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry about that, y'all. Yeah, uh, you like I wanted to say to your um to your point about Texas being the standard. I would say that um when when America used to push the the propaganda or the agenda of like the nuclear family, the white picket fence, uh, American dream, the pursuit of happiness, uh, um, agenda was probably more pre- prevalent back then. When people were really, who people really wanted a nuclear family, but so like having a, having a family uh, would require you to have a, a house with a picket, you know, picket fence instead of living in a urban center in a a, a two bedroom apartment. With it's hard to start a family 
you know, nuclear family. It's not hard, but people do it anyway. But the it's not ideal to start a nuclear family in a urban apartment. You get what I'm saying? So, but I think now nowadays people are a little bit more individ, individualistic, and that um, that American dream of having a white picket fence is is probably um, unattainable, especially based on market conditions. But I want to get into that part. But um, yeah, no, I think that's, that's, I think that's, as that's an American society, that, we that, no 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 go ahead go ahead. That. Yeah, I just don't like that go. last point. I think we graduated yeah. from that um, that nuclear family st state of mind to more of like a uh, a more indiv individualistic pursuit of happiness now. Okay, so you think more people are, are individualistic? They, they you think condo life is more the idea of the American dream? I would argue, yeah. People, it's not even, yeah. Basically, and just the the um, the lifestyle that those cities start are are providing people because people some people are selfish enough to put that lifestyle of that fast paced lifestyle, even though it's not really conducive of raising a, a family, they will still stay in that fast paced lifestyle because they're so addicted to that city life. You get what I'm saying? Even though yeah. the more practical thing to do is to move to the suburbs if you have a family, if you're starting a family. You get, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, do you think, because, well, I think it goes in stages. I think when you're younger, uh, yeah. getting fresh out of college, looking for college opportunities, you know, maybe a single person um, and without children and you're kind of building yourself up. I think traditionally younger people go to urban centers for opportunities, um, way of life. Um, uh, however, I will contend it. I will say that as you get older, you start to sacrifice and to say, you know what, I want to provide better opportunities for the kids, better school districts, more room, you know, maybe less travel, less crime. So I think in, in some aspects that uh, the American dream has been prolonged, in, in my opinion. I could agree. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, it's just, it's kind of like, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice now with a version of the American dream. Like I said, what, what I, before I got interrupted, sorry. But uh, like I was saying, you know, my early American dream was the high rise briefcase walking down Madison Ave, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, urban center style. And I've always had it in the back of my mind that, okay, sooner or later when the opportunity comes that I will probably have the white picket fence later. Yes. Whereas I think in a past time that the American dream was always intended from the start, white picket fence at 22, 23, and then you raise your family and generational familyhood in the house that you first bought or your second home. And then you continue on from 22 to death. Right. I think mm -hmm. now, like I like to your point is that, okay, yeah, America's now more people are foregoing the traditional uh, American dream in terms of the white picket fence until later in life. Mm -hmm. We'll get there someday. But as of right now, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And this is the new, that version. And there's another version later on. Yeah, I agree. So, all right. So uh, I have a video that um, we're going to play into. I'm sorry. It's, as soon as I hit the re red record button, my house erupts it's like no matter how <laughs> that's, that's like, what having a family is like man yeah. man it's like no matter i could literally you could be quiet in this house and then the moment i hit the red button to go live <laughs> the dog barks the kids yell the, the <laughs> yeah so i get you so, yeah. yeah so give me a sec Let, let's talk about this video this is a video uh in regards to uh steve harvey he talks He's getting asked a question from somebody. Let me know if you can hear it. All right, uh, let's hear from yeah, you good. Alfredo, who's working on an assignment. Where's Alfredo? Hi, Mr. Harvey. I'm in high school and I have a project to do on the American Dream. Really? And I'm determined to do and get an A on it. I'm asking you because you have so much success and you help a lot of people. I have three questions for you. What does the American Dream mean to you? 
My second question is, can anyone attain it? And then my final question is, how did you know when you achieved the American dream? I mean, well, I think it's... Okay, so I, I, he had, we answered the question, what is the American dream? And I forgot what was the second question. When did you... What the American dream mean to you? My second question is, can anyone attain it? And then my final question is, how did you know when you, you achieved the American dream? I mean, okay, okay, so... We, we kind of talked about the first one. Uh, the second one was, can anyone attain it? Do you think anyone can attain it? Yes. Yes, I, I do. I do believe anyone can attain it. And it's easier to attain it in, uh, in America than it is anywhere else. Because we have the best, um, what's it called? The best financial... Uh, Dang, it's a term for where up like the upward mobility. There's, we have like the best yes. chances of financial up, upward mobility. It's a term for that, but I forgot what it's called. But yeah, no, upward the, mobility is fine. Yeah, our system is the best at doing that. That's why people come here because we have the best uh, economy for that. Now, now, I I I would contend that there are blocks in the American dreams, for instance. Uh, I would say, of course, some would argue feminism. Some would say uh, racism. Some would say, uh, you know, uh, classism will prevent. Because, like I said, we talked about the American dream. We're talking about a, a spectrum, not just economically, but socially. Okay. You know, so a feminist would say, I'm not able to uh, get my American injury because i'm a woman okay because i'm not getting the opportunities to and you understand yeah same with the african americans we can say hey the american dream is blocked from us because we're not able to be represented politically uh all right can i can i like uh challenge that a little bit okay and let me give so, you an, another example in okay, terms of class in terms of classism some will say hey we're not being able to get the american dream because our jobs are not being paid because big companies and corporations are literally not paying us enough to provide for it yes so so out of those three examples i believe the one that's the most um the most resistive is the classism part I believe we are people are people are suffering more from classism than racism and fem feminism, um, because we live because we are in a capitalist uh, society. Um, the rich get richer, obviously, and the poor kind of it takes a really it takes it, it takes a really long time or really like mostly luck for like poor people to really become rich rich. But if you're born into richness, if you're born into uh, wealth, then the odds of you staying wealthy is greater. So that's why I think classism is the more uh, the more resistive force on people's success. Um, but I was gonna challenge you by saying that for the race, the race argument and the feminism argument, those individuals who feel that they're being limited in opportunity. Is it because their their dreams are a little bit unattainable? Like for instance, black. I'm not even gonna use black people. Let's say Asian people, right? Let's say if Asian, most Asian people around them see that their Asian counterparts are going into tech, right? So they will yeah. have like an, an innate. Um, they will they will they will probably see themselves in tech, but they just for some reason can't get into tech. And they will feel like, oh, the white people, because white people still control most of those like tech markets, even though the people, the engineers themselves are Asians. The people running the companies are white people. You know what I'm saying? They will f probably feel some type of um, resistance because of maybe just uh, for the, the the competition within like their group, because they're because they're they're competing against other Asians, but they might not reach the goal. Or the pursuit of happiness that they're trying to attain because of the because of like the um just the concentration of the those type of people because if if the I'm hiring the competitiveness yeah, the, 
Yeah, the competitive the competitiveness and the fact that a lot of the people that are pursuing these jobs are just like you, Asians. And I'm not talking about like Chinese people, I'm talking about the Indians. The Indians are really like um dominating the tech space. Uh, and it's not just like the, the Chinese Asians and the Korean Asians, it's the, also the Indian, the Indians too. Not the Native Americans, the actual Indians, you know what I'm saying? So they might feel that that pressure and might for some reason feel that they're being slighted because of oh this company doesn't want to hire another asian they might go for like a a, a mexican this time or a latino or a, you know some other race because there's so many like people like us already rep already like our demographic is already dominating this like field i i chose asians on purpose i didn't want to choose black people because black people is it seemed like black people or in like Latina and Latinos, their pursuit of happiness is very like driven in entertainment. So mm -hmm. they might want to become rappers, but then they might feel like, yo, I can't become a rapper because the, the music industry is, is ran by white people. But same kind of argument, but just in a different like lane and a different, you know, you, you get what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, different yeah, groups yeah. of people. I, I... Yeah, yeah. yeah, different groups of people may believe that their race is blocking them. Uh, you you even hear uh, even say white people they'll say you know all these Mexicans are take, taking yeah. our jobs yep. and and so they're so like I say race when I talked about racism I'm not talk necessarily just excluding every other race mm -hmm. or I'm just, it's exclusive to black people. Every race believes that their race may have a contribution to the fact of their obtaining the American dream. Yes. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, so the third question is, how did you know? So do you think you're, are, let me ask you, are you living the American dream or are you, what, part, what, what stage of the American dream do you believe that you personally are in? Um, I'm, I'm college educated. I did work as, I did work in my field. I'm still working in my field right now. Um, I'm not at the stage where I can, say that i am retired because i i personally want to learn more but i have i have like personal ambitions so i don't think i'm I, i'm living the american dream yet but i'm financially secure and i'm content at where i am at i'm not homeless i pay my own bills i got my education i still educate myself because i believe in adult education like getting more skills as an adult so I can like compete against other people, not just black people, but all people, especially because I'm in the tech, I'm, in, I'm also in tech. So that requires me to keep learning. And, but, but I would like to be a millionaire, obviously. So if my, if my goal is to be a millionaire and I'm not a millionaire yet, then I don't think I achieved my American dream yet. Or if I wanted like a, to be running like a, a, a tech company, I don't. I don't run a tech company. I've started little little businesses, little online businesses, little. But I have never started like a huge tech company. I'm, uh, mind you, I'm younger than you, so I have time. Or at least I have yes. the illusion of time. You know what I'm saying? Because I could die in a year. You know what I'm saying? Because you could outlive me still. But still, I I still feel like I have time to get to that stage. I'm in. I just turned thirty. So, 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 so with, and, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but, uh, no, I'm done. so I'm done. what I'm hearing is that when, what I'm hearing is that, okay, the, 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 the traditional, oh, I'm sorry, the traditional <laughs> view of American dream is not, you have not yet obtained it, but you understand that there is a, uh, that you're, you're, you're getting there. You're getting there. Yeah. I'm in the pursuit yeah. part. You're in the, the pursuit of the American dream. Once again, like I said, I, a lot of people would say that you are living the American dream. You Go have ahead. the you 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 have the the economic prosperity, the education and advancement, the freedom and individualism, the the equal opportunity, uh, stability, social mobility, and the pursuit of happiness. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's that's my that's kind of my point. When I when I brought up different groups of people, it's it's really a perspective thing. See, I personally, because I'm 
I'm a little bit more ambitious. And I know that if I get content, I can fall behind, right? I know that I can't, like, I can't, I, I, I don't want to use Anton, but Anton has all the money, but he still goes. He's still grinding. I don't know about you, but you're still working. You're still grinding too. You mm -hmm. might be, you know, you might be a little bit ahead of, ahead of me on the treadmill, on the rat race, right? Cause I always believe like you guys aren't better than me. You guys are just, you just got started. You, you guys were born before me. So you started first. Right. Yes. I, you know I, I totally, I, I totally I don't, get that. I don't I, look at the older generation as like, I don't, I have like a different view of the older people. Like, I don't, I don't, I see you, I respect you guys, but I don't see you guys as like, um, some of you, not all the, most of them. I, no, like, I get exactly what you're I'm, saying. I don't want to like, offend nobody, so I'm going to just, you know. But, no, no, I get what you're saying. Uh, you know, ah, uh, gosh, man, there's people who haven't got their degrees in, until they were 40, 50s. You know, yeah. and there's people who didn't buy their first house until they were 30s and 40s, you know, uh, you know, and everybody has their own level of it. So not to get too far down that road, but I understand what you're saying. Um, but to, to hone in on the fact that, you know, like I said, the idea of the American dream, you're probably living the American dream right now, which is why yeah, I, I, when, I can, I, yeah. I, which is why I can understand where you're saying is that. The idea of the American dream for me is, or to traditional view of it, may be a white picket fence and a and and uh, uh, kids' houses and, but in I in real idea, you are living it because you are following the traditional markers of the American dream. So to everybody in the chat, uh, let me see. I don't know if I'm supposed to be here, but I'm gonna stay. <laughs> and see what people from across the pond are up to. UK in the house. Salute to Ultra. XDMC. Salute to you, my guy. Uh, he says, very interesting convo, afternoon convo. Uh, also, I would like to give a shout out to Red Lipstick Vibes and Victor Freeze Music. Once again, if you guys would like to join the conversation, the link is pinned to the stream. It is also, or yeah, it's pinned to the stream, and it also is uh, in the email that I sent. So if you are a part of the Black panel of the after, oh, I'm sorry, the eBlack TV panelist distribution email list, um, please fill out that form, and the link is in your email. Uh, but let's keep going. Um, I would say I'm living the American dream currently. Uh, but I do believe that there are certain blockers that are preventing it. And we'll kind of get into that later. Okay. Well, I think it's simply the ability to achieve. You know, I, I think America creates an atmosphere for people to achieve. So the American dream is just the ability to achieve. And then the second part of your question. And anyone yeah, that was my it? argument. Oh, absolutely. Right Anybody can attain it. That's, that's what it's about. Anybody can do it, but you got to apply a set of principles. You know, you're not just going to get it because you want it. You got to be willing to work hard. You got to apply a lot of hard work. You got to apply faith. You got to apply persistence. You've got to never, ever give up. So, yeah, I think anybody can do it. Um, now, that part right there is interesting. Um, he says that you got to apply faith. You have to apply persistence. But once again, I, I would argue that a lot of people who are working hard and applying persist persistence are the ones that are saying, hey, America's these corporations are robbing us of our American dream. These yeah, feminists because, are, 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 are the, you, get, you get where I'm going with this? That we, I get your we, point. I would we, say we it's because okay. people, because working, Working isn't going to get you the American dream. You have to work. Working hard isn't necessarily going to get you the American dream that that you're probably pursuing because you're you're one you're you're leasing your time to an employer, and you're probably helping them achieve their American dream by automating whatever their dreams was because you're you working for them is automating their their life basically. So. I would say work smarter. Working smarter is way more beneficial to achieving the American dream than just working hard, working 80 hours a day, 
especially working 80 hours a day for someone else. Yes, we do need workers, but it depends on the job. A lot of people now, are doing. Now, yeah, now right. I want to cut you off because I understand what you're saying, but they also say a person will say, well, going to college to get that upward mobility costs too much money. So now I'm not able, even though I'm working harder and even though I'm working harder and now I say, you know what? I want to achieve, uh, obtain a certain type of degree. I'm not able to because I'm being systematically blocked out because of the educational uh, bear, bear, barrier. Sorry. I, and I can argue that when it comes, to, if you, if you stay consistent in trying to learn something, you're going to eventually get it. So, and you can also. College doesn't, college, college, what, what college taught me is how to teach myself. That's the benefit. That's the most I got out of college. Barring what I actually studied was actually, a, I actually went into the right field. But the most, the, I will say that the, the thing I gained the most from college was learning how to teach myself. Because in, in, in college, they don't baby you. You come in, you listen to the teacher, he gives you an assignment and he gives you a due date. And that's it. He doesn't tell you how to come up with the answers. You have to learn, teach yourself how to allocate your time, allocate your, and if you work, you have to also find out how to do that too. Work and study and um, turn, in, turn in that assignment on time, right? Yes. So, so coming from where I came from, I, I had, I, 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 I'm going to just get a little bit personal. I, I, I went to school mostly in the Bronx, which is not the most, like, uh, you know, uh, academic place. I'm going to just say that, right? So yes. I would say for me, it was kind of, I had to really, I really had to um, do a lot of things to catch up to even get to the point of me actually being an efficient learner. You know what I'm saying? I had to. I had to, I always say like I had a branch education, so I had to really catch up. I, I had to, I might, I might've had to read a little bit more just to catch up to like the people who were in like a better school than me growing up and stuff like that. But it's still, it's still achievable. You know what I'm saying? So, and nowadays you don't necessarily have to go to college to learn certain skills that could make you money. You might have to, I mean, college at least you still have to get trained, but the best thing to do is to find like a a, a, a mentor, a good me mentor, or a good teacher. I'll say that I will argue that it's it's not necessary to college, but it's the teachers or the if you could find someone that could teach you the skills, that would be that would be the best thing for like most people. You know what I'm saying? That, rather than going yeah. to college where they force you to take other. But well, shit. let's be honest. Let's let's let's, let's be honest. To yeah, a lot right? of jobs. A lot of jobs, their barrier to entry to higher level positions is college education. College education, some yeah. form of college. I think that I, I definitely think that has changed since the uh, COVID era. But I, 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 there's still barriers to entry in, in regards to that. You know, I, I went to school too. You know, mm -hmm. didn't finish, um, but I have like a 15, 20 years in the the tech in, uh, game in right? the field right yeah so that's college in itself you just went a different route yeah you know but I mean? but i i still have a barrier because of the college sometimes they just won't enter in you know yeah that's true that's true and, and you know, I, I i hate that system i i agree i agree with you that that's one of the barriers that's like kind of weird yeah that is but, definitely a barrier um and 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 that's and that's we can even talk about nursing. You know the difference between say an LP L, LN, LPN and a uh, RN and a you know a, a botanist <laughs> is is a variance of just certif certification. You know, uh, so I, I think when we talk about when we talk about the ability to upward mobile mobilize, we also have to talk about the educational piece. Um, <laughs> which then talks about what role does the government play in terms of educating its or ensuring the, the freedom of education. Um, Joe Biden is now he's trying to get rid of the, the, ten, the at least 10 or 20 K of student loan debt. That part is like I said, a part of the American dream too, because once you get rid of that debt, now you're able to buy a house 
you know, because a lot of people, their barrier to buying a house is student loan debt. Oh, I would even, I would so. even argue. I get your point, but I would think, I would say that that getting rid of debt part is way more beneficial to like people who are trying to pursue entrepreneurial things. Like for me, right? I, I had an entrepreneurial spirit, and I didn't really want to, because there's, there's obviously different ways for you to make money buying an asset like a house, obviously, or you could start a business, right? And I and I and yeah. there's just different different ways, right? So, a business is an asset in itself; it generates income, stuff like that. So there's there's some people who, when you eliminate their debt, they're able to basically um, work work get get savings and probably try to start a like a little startup or a little side hustle that can turn into something. You know what I'm saying? A little. Uh, you can, you get what I'm trying to say? Like people who have that entrepreneurial spirit and that's what, I think that's what's more um, important to to eliminating people's debt is that it gives like the people that want to pursue entrepreneurial uh, entrepreneurial, uh, endeavors to have like a, almost like a clean slate. Cause if you, you, it's really hard to start a, a company or get people to give you money or help you finance your, your your startup or your your ideas if they know you in debt or you're yeah. you personally are gonna you know be burdened by debt you know what I'm saying it's really hard to start a, start start a company like that uh, yeah, so. yeah yeah and I, I yeah yeah I get it I get it so salute to one queen lady E first time here great day to everyone listening very interesting and informative topic salute to Victor Freeze. Or, I'm sorry, Victor Hart. College is just hear me out. Says college is a waste of money for a lot of people, particularly because of the number of useless degrees out there, and there being very little influence that's, on that's the market value of a degree to its cost. I agree with that. He also says, I totally agree with disagree. With 10 to 20K of loan forgiveness, that's useless. That's less than a used car. The issue is life crushing debts over mm-hmm. 100K, 200K. Okay, I would say, I would disagree with the fact that over, what was it, over 80% of people have 10K uh, or between that, that and the threshold. So, majority of people have that threshold. So, eh. I understand it. And then he also says there should be tuition limits for colleges and universities who receive federal funding. Ooh, now we're getting into. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, that's that's a tough one. So let's, let's keep it going. Because I got another two videos that I want us to play. So. How did you know when you achieved the American dream? I don't really know if I know when I made it, but I know when my mama thought I had made it. <laughs> <laughs> when my mother saw me on the cover of Jet magazine, that was it. My mama bought 50 of them little pamphlet magazines and spread them out on the coffee table like a deck of cards. You couldn't move one of them. They was just for show. You gonna get an A on this damn paper, though. I can tell you that right now, though. Right okay, Alfredo, I'm gonna read this. Uh, we heard that recently you had your bike stolen. Yeah. How'd you get your bike stolen? I don't know. Like I had it locked up. up in- okay. I, I didn't realize he, get, he. That's where it cuts off. So that is that talking point. That was a good little kind of intro to it. Um, now I also looked up some videos of people being asked randomly on the street. I thought that was better. That uh, that is a good way of kind of getting the pulse of what the conversation is about. And somehow my full screen just went way too full. Okay, so. Um, I think it's changed over time. I think, you know, when first people first started coming to the country, they thought, you know, they could do whatever they wanted, a fresh start, new land. Now I think it's, you know, um, with today's society and TV and everything else that's going on, it's they want the big house and the big car and all the money and jewelry and everything else. Um, but I think the American dream is still just having a chance 
to get to do whatever you want? I would say that it's probably individualistic. So each person has their own feeling of what it is. I would say, you know, it's just your own level of success, whether it's you want to reach a certain level of education or a uh, certain, you want to own a home or you don't want to own a home. Maybe it's you want to travel a certain amount. Um, for me, it would be owning a home and, and having a family and having a successful career. The American dream, my American dream is to be rich where my kids don't have to worry about suffering, struggling, none of that stuff. But some people are satisfied with where they're at in life, which is kind of sad that they live paycheck to paycheck, but they're happy with their life. So the American dream is pretty much, to me, what you want it to be. Um. Okay, so the brother brings up the fact, kind of, he talks about, you know, he's almost implying that rich economic is the part of the overarching American dream. Living paycheck mm. to paycheck is not the American dream. Mm. I would disagree. I would say that sometimes, you know, being able, uh, I, I was I was going to talk about the first lady, how she says it's individualistic. Yeah, it's definitely individualistic. But, you know, a lot of times we consider the, the American dream rooted in economics, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah, I agree. I agree with you. What you're saying. Go ahead. Now, now, let me ask you this: mm. Is is it you're going to hear a lot of different people talk? But is it the American dream different for men and women? Is the American dream different for men and women? Damn, that's a good question. I, I never, I never thought about it on a gender basis. Because let's be yeah, go, go the, ahead. The, different, go ahead. the differences that I found were, you know, a uh, professional career system of success. You know, historically, men have been in the roles of primary breadwinners and leadership in the workforce, right? Uh, that now changes over to the women. Mm-hmm. More or less, women are trying to be in in, in the leadership roles, breadwinner also so you could see a woman's point of view of saying you know what i need to obtain the american dream but it's not necessarily within the patriarchal style of 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 living okay also you can talk about you know family and work balance life you know uh balancing career aspirations with family responsibility um for many women the desire for fulfilling personal relationships, having children, maintaining work-life balance can shape, say, a woman's perspective of success or fulfillment. For fulfill, oh, for fulfillment. <laughs> uh, gender equality and and empowerment. You know, uh, as we kind of shift to a gender equality style the american dream for women often includes aspirations for equal rights opportunities and empowerment uh equal pay reproductive rights and representation in positions of power and influence you know uh body image beauty standards you know uh women may face may face pressure to conform to certain beauty standards which impacts their sense of self-worth and perceptions of you know success okay so the the way i thought of the american dream was like a dream that encompassed everyone's kind of personal goals but when you when you when you confine it down to genders now that's like a that's like a different type i don't even think that's an american dream anymore that's people's individual dreams in America. And I, get, I, I agree with you, what you're saying on that basis. But I don't, I don't think what, you're, what, what you just ask in the American dream that we know of it is the same. You get what I'm trying to say? Because there, there's, a, there's a dream for like, I'm going I'm to get it off gender a little bit. And I'm going I'm to um, put it on like demographics of people like immigrants and and the people who are here the whole time, right? I'm going to use black people too. Like the black people who were here the whole time, the argument is that y'all had this opportunity. Yes, you guys probably went through the um, 
the the fucked up laws and regulations that kind of stifled your your upward mobility. But some of you still could have had the op- you still had the opportunity to kind of like you still had a lot, a lot of chances of getting getting that wealth, you know. And while the Amer- the American the, the American dream for like an immigrant may just be totally different. Yes. And you get what I'm saying? So like yeah, because yeah. their dream is different, their actions and what they do when they come here is just different. And yeah, that's kind of my point. Like it's just it's just really yeah, it's, different it's, it's, when it comes to different people, but then there's like a overall yeah, go ahead. It is very individualistic, and there is no set in stone. Yeah. Of, hey, this is the American dream. However, we do, like I said before, traditionally there is a traditional version of the American dream. Yeah, that, but, and that's what that's the way I think of it to yes. this day. And and and, and that I'm may starting be, to realize by talking to you. My bad. I'm starting to realize by talking to you and actually thinking about it now more critically that. It probably is changing, like, and yeah, the way you're thinking about it, it might be the way everyone's thinking about it now. Yeah, like and and yeah. yeah, yeah, because we we even talked about how you know earlier it it the 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 separation between generations of people mm-hmm. where younger generational people have a version of the American dream. Yep, that too. Yeah, yep. The different. So yeah. you know. It, it's, it's. I think it's okay to say, you know, men and women may have different versions of it too. Yeah, yeah. The generation, the generational differences would just hear me out say, yeah, yeah. because, yes, yep. That's, that's now spot even on. now we can even say that you know people of different cultures and races may have it, and you and like you said earlier, you know, people who are immigrating to the country, they may have an aspect of the American dream versus. Yeah, but when know, they have children here. Mm-hmm. Their ch- their kids' dreams change, mm-hmm. and as a person from an immigrant, um, Caribbean immigrant, his goal was to leave the island. His pursuit of happen to come here and build wealth and a family yeah. and whatever. But once I was born, I was born into this system, and I was taught in schools what America was supposed to be about, what. With 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 Hamilton and um and and John Jay and fucking uh, Madison was trying to do in the Federalist Papers, I just read that by the way. That's why I'm bringing them up. <laughs> I, I kind of reread yeah. that that book, but um they were they they had these are the people who kind of wrote and drafted the, the the Constitution, and they had their own version of what, and they kind of and, it, and we kind of still followed their like. Uh, they're they're the ones who who separate the state and the federal mark the federal governments and and stuff like that and they had like their own way of trying to maintain order but still encompass the American dream of everybody minus the slaves obviously at that time yeah <laughs> minus yeah because <the> yeah, <laughs> they they were really, they were really it. considering them yeah yeah I get it I get it I get it they were, yeah they were only considering like the the um their own the version people, of their own the European people who were, superiority. I understand. The I understand. Who were not a, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like okay, that. hold on, okay. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. move off of that point. But, but uh, I think it's interesting. Just hear me out. Said I guarantee the next family that migrates here from Central America or India, etc., they're going to have the same dream that my great grandparents had. So what he's saying is that you know the, the dream never. I think that I think. The idea of the American dream is not f- foreign to human beings. I think uh, I, I don't want to get too far into it, but I mm-hmm. think what he's trying to say is that you know everybody, you know, a man's dream of developing for his fa- uh, or producing for his family is universal. Yes. Uh, but the where I would disagree is, like I said, the role of women in that dream has changed. So I can, I can agree with that. Yes. So I now, uh, now that I'm thinking about it in that terms of like separating it between demographics of people. Yes, like I said, like women now, women have their own pursuit, and and men and now it, it's not even with their pursuit of happiness seems like it's not. 
um, men is not in the equation. They want kids, but kids might be in the equation, but not the the men necessarily because they don't need us anymore to 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 provide that protect that type of financial protection that they once had because they're kind of competing with us in the workforce right now in modern times. So they don't need that that version of it. Yeah, um, and uh, and like I said, you know. I think for women particularly, you know, there's a sense of autonomy and independence. Uh, my tongue is... Ooh. Independency. Independence. Independence, yes. The American dream for, like, women may include, like, you know, that notion of autonomy and, and, and independence. Oh, God. And uh, having control over one's life choices, you know, financial independence. And the ability to pursue personal goals and passion. So you can almost say that, yes, the American dream has changed because of this sense of, you know, women wanting to enter into it. So the the, the view of the American dream almost must change for everyone because it may not fit into this traditional uh, patriarchal system with the rise of feminine fem, uh, women uh, in, in, in roles. Yes. You know, so, you know, and that's the difference, because, like I said, for men, you know, we most we most often find a focus on, you know, financial stability, upward mobility and material wealth, the including of like, you know, well-paying jobs and owning a home and providing for one's family and obtaining a comfortable living space, whereas a woman is kind of, you know, they just. I would say to just kind of generalize it, say, you know, they're more interested in equal opportunities in the employment field, you know, education, leadership position, as well as the freedom to make choices about their lives. You know? Yeah. It's the, it, there's, there's almost, I don't want to say a disconnect, but almost as a, a independent thought is being broken apart now. Mm -hmm. And it, it is being expounded upon. So, you know, I, I try not to get, I'm trying not to get too far deep into that part, but uh, just understand that, you know, there's going to be answers that are, or when you hear these answers, understand that uh, is this woman speaking from the traditional point of American dream? Is the man talking about the traditional point? Uh, are they, you know, too far off? Are they willing to, are they talking about the, the current state of probably a woman or the current state of men? You know, uh, are they having hopelessness? Or are they having uh, empowerment? You know, like, you're going to hear a lot of different people talk in regards to this question. So, you know, I, I kind of want to make sure that everybody understands that's why I'm prefixing this uh, by making sure that we understand that there is going to be differences, but understand why the differences may be arising because, you know, it, essentially the American dream is a very wide open concept that it, it's kind of overarching and, uh, and molding and changing as time goes along. So let's keep going. Everybody gotcha. wants a house, it seems like. House. Uh, couple of kids, dog, <laughs> dog, car, a safe neighborhood, right? Good school district. <laughs> yeah. And the opportunity to, if you want to, just to make as much money as possible is part of the American yeah. dream. And the Ooh, right on cue, huh? You notice how the woman was talking about, you know, things that are related to her community, right? Mm -hmm. And then the man immediately said, you know, he's talking about, hey, cash, the ability to have a job, you know, right on cue. You Option have the to opportunity not. to do it and the opportunity to not. If you don't want to. <laughs> Creating debt and being able to pay for it. <laughs> being debt free uh, would be, I think, the American dream. No, I mean, it's be able to make choices. On what you're going to do with your life and it sounds corny but that's what it means well, i think what it's always i take it to be you get to own a home you have a good job you you know work for a company that you know is loyal the government helps take care of your outside needs and your kids can go to college and 
Yeah, I think it would be similar and also that we're very fortunate to live here and have freedoms, you know, and feel somewhat protected um, from, you know, danger, but maybe not as much after 9-11, but um, I think that's part of it that yeah. sure plays into it. Okay. Freedom is a big part of it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. I don't know if there's really an American dream. I think the definition is that you keep on trying and you work hard. Eventually, you'll get something that you want. Financial stability. Did you notice the, the, that lady, that young lady, she had the, the despair in her voice? Mm-hmm. She's already defeated. You know, yeah, you, you, you're kind of, you, and this is what I, it, you, uh, why I say the American gene changes based on generation too, because the old, the older people they 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 understand the American dream. You know, they have great concepts of society and where the way it works. Whereas the younger people are kind of rigid in their response because they're kind of like, well, shit, I gotta work for it. <laughs> yeah, they're not gonna talk about you know they're not gonna necessarily talk about social justice. You know crime and 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 equal opportunities they're they're kind of they are they're residing to the fact that they're gonna have to rework towards something whereas older people kind of say you know what the american dream is bigger than just working it's yeah. choice yeah, yeah i was watching a documentary on about the workforce in uh, in china and how mm -hmm. even with 1.6 billion people they have a work shortage because um they they educated their younger, their their generation, like probably, probably millennials, to become very high skilled in tech and mathematics. So it doesn't really require them to they they don't they don't um they don't what should we call it qualify for those manufacturing jobs, the factory jobs anymore. And they also have like a culture. The new generation has like a culture of like. They they despise factory work now, like they don't want to do yeah. that work that type of work anymore, which is causing a labor sh labor shortage in in China, which is very interesting, because they probably had their own pursuit. They they probably had their own um, I'm gonna call it the Chinese dream that or their the generation <laughs> before them had their own Chinese dream where they moved from the rural part of China into the cities where all the factories are located and they worked in the factories and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, they you know, China ended up, you know, excelling and, and growing in, um, as a nation, but they're, they had, now they have like a, their workforce and not that their workforce is, is, uh, coming of age. They despise that work because they probably saw their parents working those hard grueling jobs and, they don't want it anymore, and and this and it, it kind of reminds me of what's going on in America, also, and what I'm hearing from this like from people, people, people want the dream, but they kind of like they have like a little bit of despair in their voice because they know that the like, the, the kind of work they have to do might not uh, lead to them well it kind of goes achieving it, that it kind of goes. It kind of goes back to what your original uh, statement about immigrants and their generational American dream. You know, uh, yes. You know, your your American dream, like I said, may, you know, right now is to provide, just to make it, just to get by. You know, yeah. <laughs> Whereas your children, they they don't see a hardship life. They didn't see the hardship life. They've lived off the balance, the backs of your American dream. So now yeah. they create new American dreams and now because of professional success may be different. Careers and fulfillment may be different. Work balance, work life balance may be different. They, uh, uh, they know they, they've seen their father work 60, 70 hours a week to provide and they don't want that no more. Uh, they want to be able to do certain aspects of life that, you know, was required for their parents is no longer required for them. Yeah. And I, I believe society fucked up by, um, I think it's just humans in general, us humans, we fucked up by rewarding certain occupations 
or we glamorize certain occupations like like uh like entertainers it's really hard for young people to want to pursue the sciences when they don't see one these people who are working in the labs making your your the new medicine the people that's creating your new tech they're getting paid they're getting paid well right but yeah. but they're they might have like financial sta stability but that the delusions of grandeur always we see it especially through social media now we see it um uh broadcasted through entertainers and celebrities yeah and they, they it seemed like these you people know. are living the dreams that people want but those dreams aren't really conducive to maintaining a society we need people to learn yeah. how to run our infrastructure yeah you now, what I'm now that's a great that is a great point because <laughs> for instance there may have been a time where working in a car plant or a manufacturing mm -hmm. plant for a car may have been the american dream because the car was a new idea yes. It yes. was it was a it was seen that you were contributing what you're contributing you, yep. to the, the infrastructure. Now because we everybody has a car and every right. you're not yep. necessarily seeing the value of contributing that. Like you say, a person who may work in a medical lab who's curing cancers and everything, and because we have so many so many cures for everything that you may not see it as valuable anymore. Whereas, you know, yeah, you know, uh, and in the beginning of uh, uh, maybe twenty, I want to say I, I I keep saying twenty. Everybody who keeps saying twenty years ago doesn't realize that was only two thousand yeah. <laughs> forty or fifty years ago. You know where diseases and death based on diseases were more pre prevalent. You may have wanted to enter it because you're trying to solve a problem. Now I don't see the pro the problem as in my face. Therefore, I don't want to enter into that field anymore. So now it's, and, it's it's almost a catch twenty two in terms of being able to contribute to your society, which is an American dream. Yeah, yeah I'm <laughs> gonna know? sound like a China lover, bro, but I gotta bring up what they're doing with their tick their version of TikTok. Their version of TikTok is purely showing people doing academic stuff, and they're doing that on purpose because they understand the. The, the power of influence media has on the other generation. I'm not a China lover. I know they're like our, they're our, they're our arch nemesis, but I like to look at like the, the, the practical things that they're doing. And by having, by I don't know if you're familiar with TikTok, but on the American version, they have like a tab called a STEM tab where they just show um, academic stuff, right? Oh, really? Yeah, but know. the regular version of TikTok just shows. I don't even want to describe what they. It shows, it shows bullshit, basically, like yeah, women showing themselves and pranks and just like a bunch of dumb stuff. But yeah, I get it. TikTok's version is purely that STEM part, where they just show academic uh, videos. They show people, uh, um, like kids doing like very cool achievements in academics and building like uh just engineering things it's just very academic and yeah i get i get i know what they're trying on one to second. do uh oh, go ahead. hold on hold on one second kate i want to say greetings to quantum dean of metaphysics peace everyone she she says there is no american dream it's going to be one global dream one band one sound kind of thing mm. I, I I think she's talking more or less about uh, if I'm going to interpret it, she's talking more or less that the dreams of the people who are in control are going to be your dream, your limits, you know? Yeah. yeah so I, I think she's saying that. And uh, <laughs> just hear me out says, man, China is not a government power structure. We want to emulate. That's not what I'm arguing. I'm just saying <laughs> I see what they're trying to do by influencing their kids, not showing the bullshit on these apps, but showing the academic stuff. Because I, I can't, now that I'm older, I kind of want our social media to be less like perversive and showing ass and titties and, and drama, but that's what sells, unfortunately. <laughs>
I know I sound I sound crazy, but you sound real people. crazy right now, man. All right, so what do you think should happen? Like, I'm not saying I'm just saying, bro. Like, we gotta show more than just we gotta export more than that type of stuff to like because kids are the ones that's using these apps the most. And I'm not saying China is, is great. Obviously, they're not at all. Communism, I, I disagree with communism. But when it comes to technology and certain things, it just, there used to be a time where we looked up at, like, these philosophers, these really intellectual people. They were, like, the celebrities of their time. And yeah. now we kind of went towards, like, a more celebrity driven where these people don't necessarily contribute to society in any meaningful way besides entertainment and all the money is going towards these entertainers and, and, and inspiration these. inspiration is now uh inspiration is now being uh, con uh confused with uh, entertainment basically there's more there's more entertainment then there is inspiration I, and i understand what you're saying yeah I, look i get what you're saying I get what you're saying. Though. I get what you're saying. So, because like I said, I don't want to take too long. These things are supposed to be short. So I want to continue the video. But like I said, everyone, if you're looking at this, I want you to understand, look at the people. Are, are they, and I hate to say it while there's a, a Latino person on there, are they immigrants? Are they black? Are they white? Are they woman? Are they female? I mean, a woman, or are they male? Are they older? Are they younger? Please understand the different answers that they're going to give and try to see if their American ver uh, dream may have changed based on who they are or their perspective. And having a family of your own, owning your house, and yeah, happy life. At this point in time, you can't. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> I don't think there is an American dream anymore. Okay. I think it's pretty much uh, if you're eating, you're in good shape. Uh, normally, it was defined to me when I was a little girl. Big house, white picket fence, big family. Now it's just trying to get a job. To me, the American dream is being able to work for what you want, um, to enjoy your job, and to have a content life. Well, definition has changed for me over, over the years. Um, I guess at, at this stage, the, the American dream is probably just to be able to have a, have uh, your loved ones intact, your family, um, you know, not be able to sweat about just putting a roof over your head and um, food on the table. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, the material things are pretty much gone. There used to be the house and the cars and all that stuff. But for me, this stage is that's the American dream is just to, you know, be able to put my, you know, their kids to, in college mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Okay. Provide some stability. Oh, uh, well, I really, uh, for me, it really hasn't been there, but, uh, you know, I really don't know what how to answer that. Yeah, you know. I found I found it interesting that some of the older white men had the most narcissistic view of or not narcissistic, a defeatist view yeah. of the American dream. Did you notice that? Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. I didn't want to cut cut you off, but yeah, they and they... And, and 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 not only did they have the defeatist, but you can tell that there there's something else out there that may be they believe stopping them from achieving it. Um, while some of the African Americans were more uh, mm -hmm. geared towards choice being able to make choices and decisions and some had defeated there's one girl that said that yeah just having a house over your head and you know white picket fence she said it right out and then she said well right now just getting a job <laughs> you know uh yeah. so the defeatist attitude towards the american dream is permeating through society but like i said it is the American dream truly economic? It's not truly economic based. You know, it's about choices. It's about attitudes. It's about the ability to to move up and down and uh, of a societal. And some some people just want to take care of their kids. So you know, eh. it appears to me that this great social experiment is coming to an end. You know what I'm saying? This mm. this indoctrination of the American dream. Uh, 
it was it was good at a point of time, but with technology, it, it's, it's kind of changing. The way technology and markets are moving, shit, it, it's, it's it's hard enough like to get a house nowadays. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, a decent house, like it's already like, it's inflated to a point where the people who have a house they don't really want to sell or they can't even sell because no one can buy <laughs> buy it from them because it's so goddamn expensive. Yeah. You know what I'm now, like, Quantum, makes a, Quantum makes a good point. American Dream has always been a joke. That dream yep. was one of greed. They tailored that to make people work for yep. stuff life doesn't require at all. Yep. I agree. It was to keep y'all wanting too much for no reason. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, you know, do you, uh, it, the question then becomes, is the American dream technically just a marketing ploy to obtain other citizens who want to work for wages? Yeah. And I'm not even a person who thinks that way, but that's a great argument. Yeah. Like, I'm not really like, oh, they control. I'm not like a person who say, oh, they control us and it's the system and stuff like that. But you can make an argument that the, the the generations before us, because it's always people, right? It's not like a group of people. It's people in power, and, and the people that's in these positions they change over time, right? But yeah, I agree. But the people that put the people that were in power or in these positions in the past, their ideologies and the systems that they put in place is still is still um, governing us today, which is why. Which is yeah, I heard this really like great point from this physicist or this economist who was who suggested that our laws expire should expire after a certain time, so they can oh, so wow. that the new the new politicians, right, mm-hmm. the new politicians, and it's kind of scary that a lot of politicians today are still boomers. Like the majority of the, our politicians are still boomers and a little bit of Gen Xers, which is crazy. Right, and it's probably like about a handful of of millennials and even less Gen Gen Z. That's probably like two Gen Z um, congressmen. You know what I'm saying? And they're the laws that the boomer the boomers put in place, right? The social security stuff. All that happened during their during their like um, to primes. address their time, their issues. Yes. Yeah. So it's almost like they put laws into place that would. From when they're like retire, getting to retirement age, right, or when they accumulate the most power, that they will benefit the most from it, and the rest of us will be working for them because they're retired, right? It's like well, the, that's the I, that's the idea I'm of social kinda, security. I'm kind of rambling, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's the idea of social security is that the newer generation of people, while they're working, they're paying for those who uh, who have passed in the past. Exactly. Or who are working, but, who have who have retired for the uh, past, and you know, it, I, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, the one thing I will say is that you know, you talk about term limits. Uh, that's a very it, that's a touchy thing. No, um, I mean, well, I mean, actual policies. But, um, oh yeah, yeah. Well then, I, not the term limits, the, the, but, the actual but, but, policies. Then you get like, into like, pop- like if Obama. Then you, hold on, hold on, hold on. You, hold on, hold on. you then you Go get ahead. into populism. So what, that's true. Yeah, that's true. So, so once you get into, you know, once you get into saying, okay, well, this ten-year group of people believed in something, they abolished X, Y, Z. Well, the next ten-year people will have a negative reaction to the previous. Therefore, that populist will then control yeah. and. I, I think, yeah. And if, if your know, government starts having I understand, populism, I understand. then your government is going to collapse, basically. Because yeah, populism yeah. And is, I a, think, is how fucking um, Hitler and I don't know if I was supposed to say that name, but Mussolini and those type of people kind of um, gain power. Those dictators. Yes. So, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I, I'm that. not. I I definitely don't agree in populism. Uh, however, I do believe in a good dem- democracy, but I I believe in checks and balances too. So, that's yeah. that's just the liberal in me, I guess. So, I'm but, a liberal uh, too, as a New Yorker. But <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's interesting being in these spaces uh, where uh, you know uh, 
there's a lot of conservative people and people don't understand the the difference between liberal and conservative so they just call them I, I say more or less more people are just trump supporters or, <laughs> or, yeah. or, or I, pop I like to call now. myself i like to call myself socially liberal in a in a in a way i don't really agree with the the gay agenda and like how mm -hmm. being gay is is kind of connected to liberalism i don't i don't fuck with trans those like yeah i don't like, I, yeah i don't agree with that that's but that's more or less progressive i am financially conservative but more because i do agree with i do support immigration like i think there is like i think immigration is but see, but see is, that's is, the thing is, financially is, conservative see that's the thing you you financially conservative doesn't has little to do with con, like traditional conservative values it really just has to do with who's going to pay for what in terms of how the government divides the pie yeah you know you just i can be uh, i'm a liberal and i like to have my bills paid too <laughs> you know the the, the, uh, the idea of borrowing against social security is not necessarily a liberal idea it was developed by uh republicans yeah. you know like, the, i don't necessarily think debt. you should uh I don't necessarily think you should be taxing the richest of us, like people like Elon Musk or certain people, because they are contributing to, to the um, what you gonna call it, to society. But you want to have homeless people, you want to take yeah. their taxes and give it to to drug degenerates and and like the low lowlifes of the society, taking care of the prison population with their money that they work hard for. They're they're titans of industry, but you want to tax them to death because. You don't like the amount of personal wealth they amass by actually doing good business in your system. It's kind of weird that they do that, but I don't agree with that part. And that's not really like a liberal, a liberal um, stance. So that's why I say I'm conservative. Yeah, yeah. Financially, yeah. You know what I'm saying. Like I, get that, the rich, I get that. I get taxing that. the rich is kind of stupid because then, like, if everybody wants to be rich. Like you, you tax the rich until you get rich is what you're trying to say. Like it makes no sense. Like you get what I'm trying to say. Like it doesn't make I, sense. No, I get, I get what you're trying to say. I just don't, just I don't agree with it. Yeah, but yeah. uh, <laughs> it make sense to me. the pursuit of happiness Here, is to get rich. We're going to go with right, another. Go I was about to go off. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. I hear it in your voice, man. So uh, we're gonna go with our last video, and. Uh, this is Valuetainment. Um, I found this video and uh, I may, we may be past this point of the, of the conversation, but I, I wanted to bring it in because like I said, this was, this kind of talks about what the American dream is in terms of economics. So let's just play it. So I have some staggering statistics here I want to share with you from the U.S. Department of Labor that just came out, and that is about what percentage of Americans currently are self-employed or small business owners. And I have a feeling you're gonna be shocked with these numbers here. But prior to doing that, for some of you that recognize Southern California, I'm currently at the LAX, getting ready to jump on a flight to go to Hawaii. I have a business meeting to do tomorrow, and I fly back uh, to top off the 13, 13 city tour. And one of the things I was thinking about this entire time was, how great of a job marketing and advertising agencies have done convincing you and I what kind of clothes we should wear, hence skinny jeans, uh, what kind of cars we should drive, uh, what channel we should watch, which cable company we should use as a direct TV or what should we use with that. Uh, they've convinced us to see what kind of a home we should buy, what place we should travel to. Just they've done a very good job at it. But I think one of the parts that, that, that they've done a very good job with is the real estate industry. And let me explain to you what I mean by that. I think they have done an excellent job convincing you and I um, that the American dream starts with home ownership. I want you to think about that for a moment. Now, some, some of you may say, well, I think it is. I think it's a part of it. But I want you to ask a question for yourself. Think about it. How many commercials, especially recently, I was on Chicago Tribune being interviewed for an article, uh, and their concern was, why are so few people owning homes today? And why do we have record break and highs in 50 years numbers on renting? More people are renting today. And, 
And how does that make any sense if people are renting more than ever? Well, why is real estate coming back up? Well, I explained to them a big part of it is investors, uh, either people from Japan or investors from Japan or some of the investors in, that we have in America who their job is to manage risk. They're investing into real estate because long term it's a good investment. But is it a good investment for all middle Americans who don't have a lot of money set aside to go out there and buy a home after they see a commercial that says, honey, I love you so much, honey. I love you so much, baby. I am so glad we are finally living the American dream. And you know what the reality is? They're not living the American dream. They just got into debt, $400,000. And I am. So now he brings up another great point in terms of economic uh, American dream. Is the American dream to say that you're going to put yourself $400,000 in all? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you know, that's kind of, and, and then not only that, uh, when you even talk about marriage, he, he said that you look at your wife or your significant other and, you know, the cost of the ring is $20,000. Is that the American dream? Are we adding on to the American dream commodities that, like, like Quantum said earlier, may be just a marketing tool to get you to work and buy more stuff? That's what I'm saying. It seems like the people who own these things, right? These assets, mm -hmm. they own these assets and they 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 gave you a story of okay, we own all the houses now because we were born before you guys. Now we're gonna push the American dream of you having to have a house so that when we are when it's time for us to sell it to you guys, this is what you want, this is what you desire. You desire the things that we have to sell to you. And it's kind of fucked up. Mm -hmm. It's like a Ponzi, like a, it's a classic Ponzi, like, like just him y'all said. And, and we are starting to, we're starting to um, wake up to that. You yeah, know what I'm saying? That's why. I I, that's what was my argument hold about on. buying. Oh, go ahead. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Hello, S. Oh, you. Who the fuck are you? You're nobody. I have no backup. I want my fucking all. I don't need fucking backup to see wankers and morons like you, you little jab, walk, fucking cunt, packet loving, nigger loving. Yeah, yeah, that was interesting. Wait, wait does that happen often? <laughs> it happens. It, it happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. You have to be very careful about who you allow on your platform. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but back to what I was saying about the American dream and about owning a home versus, you know. <laughs> yeah, this guy said that's his dad. That's crazy. <laughs> But yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I don't. I agree with Pat. Like what he was saying about, um, I don't. I, I don't believe the American dream is owning a home anymore. You know what I'm saying? I think that that was the indoctrination that uh, that was the time to build wealth for a lot of people back then. But um, I, th I think is I think it's different. People people nowadays are are, are realizing that. Maybe starting a business, having like like doing what you're doing, starting like a little side hustle with a YouTube channel, just having your own thing, and that might be more fulfilling to people, and it actually and might end up making you more money than just straight up just owning. Well, yeah, just straight up buying a home that's already putting you in debt and just holding the home for thirty years so you can sell it to the younger generation in the future. You you get what I'm saying? You might. You might reach your goals faster if you start a business. Is what I is is what I would tell people. What I would argue for versus just home ownership. And I think this is what Pat is trying to like I guess show people that people are renting more because having a house isn't that um sexy anymore. It's, it, we're starting to see the gig. It's, it's starting to it's starting to it's starting to become apparent what's going on. Yeah, and and like I and like I said uh, before, you know, the generations are now starting to feel the 
the the blunt of the American capitalistic system to where you're not only blocked from the American dream by student loans, you're also blocked by high mortgage payments. <laughs> you know, uh, you're also blocked by, you know, other things. Maybe some people view classism, racism, feminism, you know, uh, you know, I think when it comes down to it, the American dream has definitely changed. And I want to also look at, let me see, I'm going to end this poll. And wow. Wow. The poll, the poll is definitely when asked, is there still an American dream or is that loss? And 50% said yes. 40% said no. And that means 60% of people view that the American, there is an American dream, but 40% say, no, there is no more American dream. This pessimism of the American dream is, is, is starting to run rampant within society. Therefore, that's why you can have candidates that talk about reviving the American dream. And that's why sometimes when you talk about social and uh, political issues, these people want to invoke uh, uh, motion to say that there's reasons why we're not economically upward. There's reasons why healthy people are not being able to, to live their lives, you know? Educational wise, you know, these. this is why when we talk about the American dream, in terms of politically and, and also uh, societal wise, the other factors of economics aren't just there, are there. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I get you. You know, so, so you know, that's why, you know, like I said, man, it, <laughs> this is kind of like a dry run of kind of like a larger topic. I'm going to be running a panel uh, coming up really soon uh, with some very interesting people, but, uh, I want I want people to understand that you know, or at least I want to educate my uh, my audience and say, okay, when we talk about the American dream, and when you see this panel, understand that we're talking about this version of the American dream. And I'm hoping that people can understand the different levels of and different outside or external forces that may change a person's in, individual idea of the American dream. Mm -hmm. So let's keep this going. I'm gonna uh, wrap this up. Ask the question. What is the American dream? I asked it earlier. Is it home ownership? I don't know about that. I'm an immigrant. We came to America for the American dream to be a small business owner. But I want to give you a number for where the biggest problem I believe is right now in America. And I want to challenge the marketing and advertising agencies and the cities and the counties and the states to do a better job encouraging people to start small businesses. Did you know in 1950? 25% of all American workers had a small business or were self-employed. You want to take a wild guess what that number is today? So 1950 was 25%. What do you think that number is today? All-time low. Just six years ago, it was 11%. You know what it is today? 7.8%. 7.8% of Americans only are self-employed and own a business. That's a pretty scary thought. I think we need to do a better job advertising and turning these business owners that went from like yesterday, I was in Reno sitting with the owner of Peppermill, who he started with a small coffee shop and now he runs Peppermill. They just invested $600 million in renovations. Now they own five casinos. They've created thousands of jobs. I think we need to do a better job telling those stories to inspire people to become small business owners and self-employed. Because if we don't, the job market is not gonna be looking too bright for my kids. Uh, if we keep getting this self-employed and small business owner numbers, lower so that's mess my message of the week to you i agree with that line of thinking that was my that's my point i i believe that small businesses are more better at achieving your american uh american uh american dream than just owning a ass just owning a house you know what i'm saying you can because because you're contributing to society by actually running a small business, you're employing people, right? You're, you're, you're providing a service to society. You're, 
it's a, it's a lot of things that small businesses do that are very like beneficial to the community in in itself. Just owning one, everyone can't own everything. <laughs> Everybody can't have their own to own. And plus, if everyone owns something, who's gonna you're gonna just end up living in what you own if everybody has has the ability to own a house. If, you know, you get what I'm trying to say? Then you got your then you got people who wanna give at houses to their kids and their family yeah. members and like stuff like that. And it's just yeah. Yeah, I think I think the whole the the instruments of prior capitalism may not be fully working. Uh, I remember uh, insurance. You know, people say, oh, you know, buy life insurance, buy this type of insurance. And, you know, I think even the attitude on that has changed because insurances are, you know, so greedy that they, if you're on your deathbed, they will drop your insurance right there. Yo, insur life insurance and health insurance feels so scammy just by nature. And there's yeah. something just off about life insurance to me. I get why people do it, especially if, if you have kids. If you have a family, obviously do it. But there's something just off about that to me. Yeah, You're, you're, you're taking people's money who are probably – you're taking healthy people, and most people aren't, aren't un unhealthy. I'm gonna assume. So you're you're pulling all their money together and you're giving it to the unhealthy people, and then the people who are gonna end up piling into this pool of money might not even get all that money that they put they put in at the end of the day because you're kind of you kind of because with inflation, health care is getting more expensive. Therefore, you're gonna have to take more a bigger percentage of people's money. Like you're gonna have to take 100 percent of your money and probably 50 percent of mine's to to cover the cost to cover 100 percent of somebody else's cost of yes. one person's cost. So you're taking money from two people to to pay for one individual. That's what it seems, and that's that's. I don't know. Sound yeah, like and, 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 and it, yeah, it, it, insurance <laughs> is definitely a pseudo Ponzi scheme in some aspects. I I don't want to go uh, too hard on it, but uh. It's definitely it, the idea of it is that uh, you you pay into a pot, that pot is being used, of course, to invest in a market managed by a company that then assesses risk, mm -hmm. you know, based on the population. So, yeah, it's it's definitely what it is. Hold on, but uh, just hear me out. Says, what is the alternative in terms of the uh, housing question? Rent is just as expensive, <clears throat> expensive, and rents are basically the same as mortgage payments. No one is going to get, get save enough to buy a house cash. Do what the Chinese do. They live in a Chinese store, bro. <laughs> that's, that's what they do. They live, they live in the back of a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that could help. Like you, People figure it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then and then he says also, okay, but it's not a binary decision, meaning, you know, one or the other, home ownership or your or your own business. It's home ownership versus renting versus street living. But when you when you just own a home, where does the flow of capital go? It just goes to the banks and you. When you have yeah. a business, the flow of capital goes towards your community. You're paying taxes. That goes back to the community in, in some sort. Um, it's just it's it's just a better it's just better for the economy in general. My 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 opinion. You don't gotta agree with me. This is the internet. We all got opinions, but I agree with what Pat was saying that small businesses might be the right way to go rather than forcing people to buy. Homes off of the older generations who are or who are, who are holding on to their home to their uh to their property, and then most of the time they're gonna probably give it to their to their incompetent children anyway, who are probably gonna end up selling it off to to a, to a BlackRock or some shit to cash out. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I see it. That's yeah, I, I see. get, I, I get it. I've seen. It. Uh, there's actually a. Uh, I want to say a foreign couple that owned a store and they bought the next plot of land right next to it. 
and basically with their they're raising their son and uh raising their family right out of basically the store i understand exactly what you're saying so my mind is spinning the last one <laughs> you should do both but not only at home hurt yourself look we can agree to disagree on that point we if can you want to buy a home so much turn your home into a business where i'm not saying like you know just we, we we are we're in the age of uh technology you can buy a home with a garage and start uh um drop shipping stuff to people Import your import your products from China and turn your fucking um your house into a a little small business where you manage you could do anything if you just put your mind to it. We're innovative people. You know. I get it. But okay, last any last words, man. Cause we're gonna wrap it up. That was my last words. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Salute to you. Thank you for joining me uh on the Black Afternoon Conversation. I appreciate you. Okay. All right, y'all. See you. Yeah. Yes. All right, man. All right, man. Okay, everybody. Okay, everybody. Thank y'all for joining the Black Afternoon Conversation. Please make sure you hit that like button. If you like the content, please subscribe to to it. I have a lot of things coming up. I have some panels coming up. I have a special guest that's going to be popping up sometime next week, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed it. But uh, interesting conversation interesting thing if if you haven't learned something about this conversation i don't know but uh salute to just hear me out he he sends a ten dollar super chat saying my penance <laughs> not to rap it up music <laughs> uh, also if you like to support if you like to support the channel, become a member. It is a cheap membership, but become a member of the Black Pride. But salute to everybody. This was the Black After Dude conversation. Y'all petty, man. Y'all petty. When you will what you gonna do? I won't go for anything that isn't in direction of the ball. Never let anything come in between Cause surely you would lose Introspect, take a sec, take a sec Watch it step, where you step, when you step Falling free through the sky Feel the breeze, feel the eye All your fears, let them die Energy never flies Introspect, take a sec, take a second Let your world unfold Falling free through the sky There's nothing we cannot handle Light up the dark like a candle Usually they misunderstand you Yeah Give a damn if they can't relate All we want is to motivate Take it on, never hesitate Acknowledge it But then make it We are the ones in control We are the ones in control Just hone in your faith and your power Trust we could win, this is ours No, this is not just a dream Take on the world and devour Walking down this only road Damn near almost lost my soul